Hello, my name is Sean Sperry and I am with the IBM Systems Group. I am going to do a series of videos on upgrading Spectrum Protect version 7 to version 8 and some of the various aspects and components of that upgrade. And I'm going to start by doing a demo of a Linux uh, server upgrade. So before I do that, I wanted to touch on some various points that are uh, related to the upgrade just to make sure that everything is in place and perhaps give you some ideas of things you need to check and be certain of and plan for before you actually do the upgrade. First of all, typically uh, IBM may drop or add operating systems when a major version of Spectrum Protect changes. So the first thing I would recommend you do is go to the operated system support pages for Spectrum Protect and make sure that your operating system is still supported in version 8 if you're upgrading from version 7. The next thing I want to point out is the security enhancements and changes that happened in the version 7 code stream and the version 8 code stream. Beginning in version 7.1.8 and 8.1.2, Spectrum Protect greatly enhanced the security to use TLS, specifically for the exchange of passwords and other metadata information that were very security sensitive. This is done through self-signed certificates and the automatic distribution of those certificates from the various components to the components that are connecting in. So maybe from the server to the client or from the server to the operation center. Now there are two modes for this or two modes for clients and servers in the Spectrum Protect versions after 7.1.8 and 8.1.2. Those modes are strict and transitional. And those two modes are designed to support uh, backwards compatibility. So for instance, if you have a client or a server or a storage agent that is earlier than those 7.1.8 or 8.1.2 servers, uh, this, the communication can run in this so-called transitional mode where these new strict security measures and TLS communication protocols aren't enforced. But once you upgrade to a version that is later than 7.1.8 or 8.1.2, the Spectrum Protect server will automatically distribute a self-signed certificate and change the component to this so-called strict mode that enforces these new security uh, standards. Uh, all of that is uh, documented, or a lot of that is documented in this link that I provided here in the PowerPoint. So if you are coming from a version that is earlier than 7.1.8 in the 7 code stream or earlier than 8.1.2 in the 8 code stream, you're going to want to take a look at that and review how that works before you go out and just upgrade the server to make sure that you have an understanding of how certificates are exchanged and what new procedures or processes you might have to put in place for this. From an upgrade order perspective, we typically recommend upgrading from the inside out. So you're going to start from the server and then upgrade the storage agents and the clients uh, after that. If you have multiple servers or maybe library managers and library clients, you're going to upgrade the library managers first and then upgrade the library clients, storage agents, and clients uh, after that. And here again, you see I put a link in this slide uh, that gives you some information on client compatibility and compatibility between those various components. From a backup perspective, uh, this is going to be always true of Spectrum Protect. You want to have these critical files in case something goes wrong. So that includes a database backup, including all the encryption keys, a dev config, a vol hist, 
the self-signed certificates, if that's what you're using for the Spectrum Protect server, an output of the QSYS, a dsmserve.op file, and if you're using Disaster Recovery Manager, a DRM plan file. So I just, before I'm doing an upgrade, I always make a copy of these, put them on the side, maybe an extra copy, just in case something should go wrong and I should need to, uh, to back out. When you do the database backup, if you have a password on that database backup, you're of course going to need that. And Spectrum Protect runs as an instance on Unix, so you're going to need the password for the instance uh, owner, specifically in Unix and on Linux. Finally, uh, I highly recommend, if you possibly can, to test the upgrade on your own server database. Uh, a lot of times this can be difficult because the Spectrum Protect server typically has a lot of storage associated with it that's very expensive. So replicating that in a test environment completely can be totally can be difficult. But even if you're only able to replicate the database and server software components, you can try the upgrade make sure everything goes well, maybe try one test client just to get familiar uh, with the procedure. As far as these links go, I will share some of these in the description down at the bottom of this YouTube so you can take a look and, uh, and see and get that information uh, if you're interested. And I will add there's a lot of good information in the documentation about planning for this upgrade and actually performing uh, the upgrade. So for me, I am going to do a relatively simple case, actually a very simple case. Uh, I have a Red Hat Enterprise Linux server running at version 7.8 and I have a Spectrum Protect server that has already gone through any of the security updates. So I'm running version 7.1.11. So it's the latest version of the Spectrum Protect server in the 7 stream. And I am going to upgrade to version 8.1.10. So again, that's the latest version in the version 8 stream. So all of that introduction being said, let's take a look at the upgrade. Okay, so here we are on our Red Hat Spectrum Protect server. Uh, as you can see, I am running the GUI here just to make things look a little uh, nice. Uh, but you could, of course, do this on a straight uh, uh, terminal or if you'd like and uh, not use the GUI version of the, uh, of the installer. Uh, I am logged on as the instance owner, which in my case happens to be DB2 inst1. So this needs to be run as root. So you could either sudo it or uh, uh, just uh, change context to root, which is what I'll do. And I have my server package downloaded uh, here in the, uh, in the downloads directory. So the first thing I'll do is change the uh, permissions on the package and uh, then I'll go ahead and extract the bundle. Now I downloaded this package from IBM Passport Advantage and the reason I did that is because it contains the license file. And when upgrading from major version to major version, uh, you are going to need a license file. And uh, so I made sure I downloaded the patch that does contain the, uh, the license file for version 8. This download also contains the uh, contains the server, 
the storage agent and the operation center so we're going to upgrade those all uh, at one time uh, before I start the upgrade I will log on to the server and of course if backups were running you need to stop those backups uh, uh, or stop any operations that you have running on the server most uh, people would schedule this type of operation on perhaps a weekend during the day since that is really the uh, the downtime for a Spectrum Protect uh, server so for me my uh, server only has my operation center running as sessions and there are no processes found using either Q session or QProc. So I'm going to go ahead and halt the server before I uh, start the upgrade. So now the uh, the server is down. I'll grab for if I can type here. I'll grab the. Uh, for the server process and as you can see it is indeed down so now I am ready to go ahead and install the uh, the version 8 of the server now there is a slash C or dash C option to run this at the console and not get the GUI version of the installer since we have X installed on here, I'm going to go ahead and run the GUI version of the installer. Uh, as I said, just to make things uh, just to make things uh, pretty. And this uh, gives you the option to either do a new install or to do an update. I am going to go ahead and select to do the update. The IBM installation manager finds that I have, at the time, version 7, IBM Tivoli Storage Manager installed. And I'm going to go ahead and update all the packages and recommended fixes for that particular uh, package. It is going to validate the package prerequisites. And then first thing it's going to do is ask me for the instance credentials for the instance that uh, is being used for this Spectrum Protect server. I'll give it the instance credentials, verify that, and click Next. And then it's giving me information about the uh, installation size, the packages that it's going to install, as you can see, it's going to install the license, the operation center, the server, uh, which is what I said was installed on here. So now I'll go ahead and click on uh, update. And basically this is just going to go ahead and uh, lay down the bits for version 8.1.10 of Spectrum Protect, the Operation Center, and the license file. So I'll go ahead and pause the video while that happens uh, since it'll take a while. Okay, so my install took maybe five or ten minutes. Uh, most of that was spent uh, copying out DB2, uh, but uh, Depending on the size of your database, of course, that could vary uh, some, I suppose. And I'll go ahead and do a finish and uh, go ahead and get out of IBM Installation Manager. And then I will... Go ahead and start my instance. D 
db2 install uh, and there is a start and this will of course start the DSM serve process uh, in the background so I'll go ahead and now exit my root uh, shell and spectrum protect the server might take uh, some time to start up I'll give it a minute or two to start in the background and just log in uh, the negative 50 is typically a uh, a code that is thrown when the spectrum protect server is not completely up so I will just wait a minute while the server starts and we're still not up and running let's wait 30 more seconds for the server to completely start up and here is my server and note that we are running at a version 8.1.10 level and uh, if I do a QSys, you'll see the show version history command, and you can see that I was running at version 7.1.11, and now I am running at uh, at 8.1.10. So that concludes this demo. I hope you found it useful, and I look forward to seeing you in an upcoming video.